If you're looking to secure your cluster, have a service mesh support based on eBPF, then this episode is for you. Welcome to Is It Observable? The main objective of Is It Observable? is to provide tutorials on how to observe a given technology. Today's episode is part of the Kubernetes, the Service Mesh and eBPF series, where we already covered several episodes. The introduction to Service Mesh and Istio, what is Linkerd, what is eBPF and way more. Today's episode will be focused on a service mesh and networking platform that manage your network using eBPF technology. And I'm referring to Cilium. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see what we're going to learn out of this episode. We'll start with an introduction reminding how the network is managed in our Kubernetes cluster. We will then describe the solution Cilium. The, we'll look at the Cilium service mesh support. We'll look at also Humble, the Prometheus metrics provided by Cilium and Humble. We will have a short interview with one of the maintainer, Thomas Graf. And as usual, we'll jump into a tutorial. Our vanilla Kubernetes clusters provides a networking layer allowing us to expose our pods with the help of services. Yes, it makes sense to refer to a service rather than a pod because a pod is ephemeral and can be destroyed. Let's make five seconds break and look at how Kubernetes manage the network. As you probably already know, when we deploy a service, we precise a selector that will match all the pods of our service. Technically, once the service is created, Kubernetes is also creating an endpoint object that will match the various pods of our service with their IP address. Endpoints are important because kubeproxy will utilize the information to create the right networking rule. Kubeproxy is a crucial component running on each node of our cluster. It will make the routing of the traffic to the right pod, in fact, to the right IP address. Kubeproxy is running on the node and will create one IP table rule per service. The IP table rule take the service IP and the port and redirect the traffic to the one of the pod's IP. For each endpoint, Kubeproxy installs IP table rules which will help to select the right pod. Kubeproxy will rely on the readiness probe to determine the right backing pod to serve. But how does Kubernetes resolve the name of our service with the various IP tables created by Kubeproxy? For this, Kubernetes use kubedns, or most likely core DNS, that will have one DNS role per service. And then Kubeproxy will resolve the service name into the right IP address. With this mechanism, any part of our cluster can access to any service except if we filter the traffic by creating a network policy rule. The standard network policy only allows us to apply a rule on an IP and port, so we can lock or unlock the access to a given service, but we cannot allow the access to, let's say, a limited HTTP endpoint or service. For example, we can allow all the service to reach slash cart and the rest of the, the, the service will be rejected. This is not supported by the default network policy. As explained, Kubernetes networking relies a lot on IP tables. IP tables is a core technology to manage the networking of our service. But it has an impact once you start having lots, lots, lots of service deployed in a cluster. Meaning that we will have a lot, many, 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 many IP table rules in each node of a cluster. From that particular moment, IP tables could be one of the bottleneck for a cluster. So how can we resolve this? We can rely on something else than IP table. Mm, eBPF. If you want to learn more about eBPF, check the episode explaining what is eBPF. 
Helium is an open source project that will provide networking, security, and observability in our cloud native environment such as Kubernetes. With the help of eBPF, Cilium can inject network security policy without any change on our application code. Deploying Cilium requires to make sure to add the right tents to our nodes to force any workload to wait for the Cilium agent. We also need to disable the default container network interface, the CNI. To deploy Cilium, you can either use the Cilium CLI that will help us to deploy and manage Cilium. So here is the link to the Cilium CLI. We can also install uh, Cilium using the Helm chart. So here is the URL to the Helm chart. Once Cilium is deployed, you will have several components that will manage the network in our cluster. The Cilium agent deployed as a daemon set, each node will have the Cilium agent that will inject the BPF program to look at the network interface of the node and on each container deployed in the node. The Cilium operator that will manage the various policies that we would like to apply in our cluster. The Cilium node init that will run as a daemon set which handle tasks like mounting the eBPF file system and updating existing CNI plugin to run in a transparent mode. The Cilium CNI plugin, it will basically trigger the necessary data path configuration to provide networking, load balancing, and network policies for the pods. Once Cilium deployed, you can start managing the network policies on your cluster using a CRD provided by Cilium, the Cilium Network Policy. With the Cilium Network Policy, you can authorize traffic for a given pod. The Cilium Network Policy allows you to select the pod by using a label selector. The pods that would be targeted by the rule, and then you also precise the from endpoint, who can reach the selected pod, on which port. Example, if I want to authorize all the pods from the hipster shop to send their open telemetry spans to the open telemetry collector deployed in the default namespace. And also the collector has a label, it's component equal collector. We could create the following rule. Here is the rule. So here is the network uh, policy that we can apply. So we can see that we are putting uh, a selector based on the component equal op uh, hotel collector. And then from the endpoint, we authorize all the pods from the namespace hipster shop. And this, they are only authorized to reach out to the gRPC port of OpenTelemetry. Here, it means that only the pods from the hipster shop can send the traffic to my OpenTelemetry collector. The Cilium network policy can even precise the egress rule if the pod needs to contact a service out of the cluster. We can authorize the communication to a specific domain name. In our example, my collector will probably export the spans to Dashrace. So I can even adjust the rule that we have just created. So here is the, the rule, the modified rule. Uh, as you can see here, we authorize only uh, the domain name live.danatrace.com. Cilium allows us to even create rule on based on application layers by specifying the authorized HTTP endpoints, the Kafka topic, uh, the query allowed to send to Cassandra, uh, the memcache request. For example, in our example with the open telemetry collector, we could update our uh, network, Cilium network policy. Uh, and here we only authorize the endpoint v1 traces. For more information, I would clearly recommend to look at Cilium's documentation. So here is the link to Cilium's documentation. By deploying Cilium in a standard way, it will provide a couple of CRDs. So the Cilium cluster-wide network policy, the Cilium endpoints, the Cilium external workload, the Cilium identity, the Cilium network policy, the Cilium node. You will mainly use Cilium network policy and Cilium cluster-wide network policy. The Cilium cluster-wide network policy is similar to the Cilium network policy, except it targets the entire cluster. Instead of selecting a pod based on labels, you will select nodes. 
Cilium will automatically create Cilium endpoint. It will have one Cilium endpoint created for each service managed by Cilium with the same name and in the same namespace. In fact, you can also see the various Cilium endpoints by using the Cilium CLI. Cilium will also create a Cilium node for each node managed by Cilium. One small note, Cilium will manage all the services that are configured in host network equal false. Cilium provides many advanced networking features to manage our cluster, but it will require to enable extensions in Cilium. So we can extend by adding the bandwidth management, the egress gateway, the cluster mesh, and more. There is also an option where we can replace Kube proxy by Cilium. Once the extensions is deployed, it will also provide extra CRDs to manage the extensions. Here is the link to the bandwidth management. It provides a couple of CRDs. Uh, here is the link for the egress gateway. And here also the link for the cluster mesh. Cluster mesh will manage several clusters with the same network. Out of the various networking support provided by Cilium, it also supports ingress. To enable ingress, it is required to fully disable Kube proxy and deploy Cilium with the mode Kube proxy replacement equals strict. To disable it in an existing managed cluster, you will need to delete the daemon set uh, for Kube proxy, delete the config map for the Kube proxy in case Kube proxy runs after any cluster updates and also back up the IP tables in each of your nodes. In a cluster managed by cloud providers, you won't be able to disable easily Kube proxy. That is a reason uh, Google, Amazon, and the others provides options to create cluster with Cilium enabled. Once Cilium is properly configured, you can also deploy the ingress extensions, delegating the ingress implementation to Cilium. We would be able to define ingress rule with the ingress class name equal to Cilium. So at the end, with the Kube proxy replacement and the ingress enable, Cilium is able to cover the following features. So network filtering, load balancing, ingress, and observability. But as explained in the introduction to Service Mesh, a Service Mesh provides several features, the traffic split, the rate limit, observability, circuit breaker, uh, retry logic, and more. Cilium has two modes on the service mesh, with the sidecar proxy and without the sidecar proxy. To enable proxying without sidecar, you will need to enable the Cilium ingress support and add the extra config on Envoy. Once deployed, Cilium will provide one Envoy per node and a new CRD the Cilium Envoy config, allowing you to define proxy rules directly on the envoys. So here is an example of an Envoy config. With and the Envoy support, you will only have one Envoy per node instead of X Envoy for each pod. Otherwise, Cilium provides an Istio integration. This integration is exciting because it allows us to have a slightly different data plane compared to a normal Istio deployment. To remind, once Istio is deployed, Istio has a control plane and a data plane. The data plane is made of all the sidecar proxy injected in our workload. All the namespaces having the Istio annotation would have the sidecar proxy injected. The sidecar proxy, in the case of Istio, it's Envoy, inject, it will be injected in our workload, use IP tables to route properly the traffic. With the Cilium integration, we are removing the support of IP tables and increase the performance of our service mesh. The deployment of the Istio version of Cilium requires to use a specific CLI, so it's this Cilium Istio CTL. Humble is a fully distributed networking and security observability platform. It is built on the top of Cilium and EDPF to enable deep visibility into the communication and the behavior of the services, as well as the networking infrastructure in a completely transparent manner. Humble will allow us to understand 
the dependency between our services by providing a communication map, how our network is currently behaving, uh, and also the level of availability and performance of our different services. Humble will come with the Humble server deployed as a daemon set. It will collect all the information provided by the Cilium agents. The Humble servers, in fact, is part of the Cilium agent. The Humble relay to collect all the data from all the Humble servers. The Humble CLI, the Humble UI provides also web UI and a dashboard. Cilium and Humble has a standard Prometheus support that needs to be deployed when deploying Cilium or Humble. Once the Prometheus support is enabled, each component will produce Prometheus metrics. So the various Cilium agents, the Cilium operator, the Cilium envoy if you have enabled the Cilium envoy support, and Humble. When Humble Prometheus support is enabled, it creates a new service in our cluster, the Humble metrics that expose the Prometheus data. Cilium update the various component by adding the right Prometheus annotations. So for Cilium agents, you will have the following annotations added. For the Cilium operator, you have this one added. And the Humble metrics, you'll have the following one. Let's have a look at the type of metrics provided by this support. We'll have metrics related to the Cilium endpoints. We can keep track on the number of endpoints managed by Cilium and the time to regenerate the endpoints. We have the cluster health, so unreached nodes, the number of nodes that cannot be reached, the unreached health endpoints, the number of health endpoints that cannot be reached. We have also metrics related to node connectivity. So node connectivity will provide the connectivity between the various nodes and the agents. So we'll have the latency and all the details about the errors. Cluster mesh. So we have a couple of metrics uh, allowing us to report the number of nodes in the cluster mesh, the readiness status, the number of nodes in failure, and so on. eBPF. eBPF metrics uh, is reporting the number of calls to the BPF maps, the memory consumed by the BPF programs, the duration of latency uh, of the BPF syscalls, and way more. We have all the information about drops, so we report the number of packets forward or dropped. We also have metrics specific to identity, so reporting the number of identity managed by Cilium. If you define policies, you will also have metrics, so L3, L4 policy can report the number of policy loaded, the status of each policies. If you define uh, application policies on the layer seven on HTTP Kafka, we can report the redirect, the number of requests and so on. Also, we have metrics related to the API rate limit of Cilium. So we can see the number of requests processed, the current rate limit defined, uh, the wait durations and more. On the operator, we can keep track on the number of IP allocated, the number of nodes having issues to allocate an address. So all the metrics from the operator and the same agents will allow us to keep track on the health of the Cilium core components. Humble on how also provides metrics. So we have DNS metrics, so reporting the DNS time, the response times, and so on. We can also look at the drop, the HTTP metrics, so the number of requests uh, and the durations and more. So Humble will help us to report metrics related to the traffic managed by Cilium, a bit similar to the metric provided by a service mesh. Hi, Thomas, how are you? Very good. So I have uh, produced an episode on, on Cilium. So I looked at the different aspects of Cilium and Humble, uh, the various aspects of different features that Cilium is providing. And uh, there, in fact, there's so much features that Cilium is providing. Uh, and to be able to have more news, uh, I would definitely have the best way of having news is to basically interview you directly. Mm -hmm. So before we start the interview, maybe you can take a few minutes and, and introduce yourself to the community. Yes, hello, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the co-creators of uh, Cilium. 
I'm a long-term kernel developer, so I've spent my early career doing kernel development code at Red Hat, always on the networking side. I worked on servers, IP tables, open vSwitch during the virtualization, and now for the last six years um, on Cilium with eBPF. So uh, in Cilium, uh, what I really liked, first of all, is the fact that uh, by having Cilium, uh, we don't rely necessarily on IP tables anymore. Yep. So uh, especially in large cluster, I think it's uh, it's a great to have to rely on technology that help us to at least guarantee some performance. So that's mm -hmm. wonderful. And what is interesting is the uh, first of all the Cilium network uh, uh, policies where you can have either L3, L4, L7 roles. Um, are you planning to add more roles uh, with, I don't know, I know that you have a cluster mesh support uh, and a service mesh support. Are you going to extend the, uh, network policy roles in the future or is it currently mainly related to L3 and L7 roles? So we, we have been supporting layer three all the way to layer seven policy control for several years now. And we've always been using Envoy as the proxy for the layer, layer seven authorization. What we've added more recently is the service mesh capability that like a full like, extended rich feature set of the entire uh, service mesh, including traffic management, observability, distributed tracing, and all of this. And what's unique, what we brought is the sidecar free approach. We announced this um, in KubeCon, at KubeCon in um, Valencia a couple of months back. And what we're now focusing on, what we are, we're, we are bringing to the network policy world is an MTLS model, a new MTLS model that is not dependent on proxy and that will be applicable to network policy in general. So it means that you can then, instead of just relying on network level segmentation, which, which is what all CNI implementations do, which uh, implement network policy do, we bring an MTLS model where we can do strong mutual authentication based on identities provided by Spiffy or wire certificates coming in from CERP manager and so on. So we're going into, an, in, into a, a direction where we combine the network policy enforcement with encryption and network segmentation and distributed firewalling with the security properties of a service mesh. So on the service mesh support, so uh, it's actually possible if you enable the uh, Envoy uh, config mm -hmm. support. Um, and uh, there are other uh, proxy of the market out there. Uh, and so Envoy is a very uh, strong and, and providing a lot of features on the networking side. But there is also Linkerd that provides mm -hmm. some uh, some proxies. Uh, have you thought about also extending uh, Cilium to other proxy of the market or you mainly focus on Envoy? Right now we're, we're using Envoy, but the architecture and how we build Cilium, it is not limited to Envoy at all. In fact, we're actually using non-Envoy proxies, for example, for Kafka and DNS. So we have been using um, other Golang-based proxies in the past, and I think there is an issue tracking support for Linkerd as well. In general, we are not really opinionated, so if users or Cilium community members want to bring in additional proxy support, we would be very open to that. There's, for example, discussion right now to integrate with Istio Ambient Mesh to support C-Tunnel. Um, I know the Istio Ambient Mesh team has um, open source a new proxy, which is not Envoy based for the C-Tunnel part. We're definitely interested to potentially leverage that as well. So Cilium has been using Envoy and we are very, very happy with Envoy, but we're actually we're not bound to it. So we, we're, we're, uh, we're open to what the, what the, what the Cilium community, uh, what path the Cilium community wants to take. So I also saw that yeah, there is the Istio integration. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you, uh, is Istio was a previous integration and they will be replaced by your, your standard service mesh support? Or are you going to extend the integration of uh, the Istio by uh, having an extra configuration to remove the sidecars? So first of all, you can run any service mesh on top of Cilium if you do, if you if you want so. And I think that has been actually the most common option: users running Cilium as their CNI and then running Linkerd or uh, Istio or Kuma or um, Console Console Connect and other service mesh on top of Cilium. Um, just around the time when Istio 1.0 came out, we did an integration specifically with Istio where Cilium Layer 7 policies get enforced via the Istio managed uh, sidecar. Now Cilium Service Mesh is an additional option, so we will continue to support to link the, the, Istio, the, the Istio integration that we have today, um, and we will continue to support running any Service Mesh on top, on top of Cilium. Cilium Service Mesh is essentially now an opinion, a Cilium opinionated way to do 
um, service mesh. And what is, what is unique about that implementation is, first of all, it gets rid of the sidecars, very similar to how Istio Ambi Mesh does this, but then Scylla Mesh goes further and implements a lot of the functionality in eBPF itself. So it's not only sidecar free, but it becomes proxy free. And that enters an entire new level of performance and reduces the footprint even further. So that's essentially our special flavor of, ser of ser service mesh. Yeah, because I was wondering, because I, I played around and I, so uh, you can enable the Envoy support mm -hmm. uh, to get the mesh support. And, uh, and I was trying to say, oh, I'm going to use the Easter integration. And I was thinking that if I have Envoy uh, enabled, I thought that Istio won't inject the sidecar proxy, mm -hmm. but I think uh, it's at the moment it was a di two different solutions. It right. was, and I think what's what's um, a nice property of the Istio ambient mesh work is that that actually becomes that simplifies the work that we potentially have need to do on the Cilium side to support Istio in a non sidecar configuration as well. Prior to Istio ambient mesh, Istio was very specifically bound to the sidecar model, and the Istio internals were. Um, kind of specifically designed for running a sidecar model. So Istio Amish Mesh actually makes it easier to, to, to integrate Istio as a control plane into Cilium and even support a non-sidecar model as well. That said, I think based on the user feedback we're getting, um, our users, Cilium users, are mostly looking forward to the Gateway API implementation. I was exactly going to ask. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that seems to be the, the next standard. And uh, we are working on Gateway API. The code is complete. It will be released as part of Cilium 113 before the end of the year, but it's already available for testing. We're only completing the documentation at this point and, um, and uh, completing the, the test coverage CI and so on. Um, and so related to Humble, because I really like Humble, the fact that you can collect lots of really interesting metrics, uh, similar to a bit, uh, what Istio can provide as in terms of metrics, mm -hmm. but without, if you don't deploy Istio, you have those metrics naturally with uh, with Humble, so that's fantastic. Um, so I was able to explore a lot what the Prometheus met, uh, support in terms of metrics, but are you also planning to add uh, open telemetry mm -hmm. uh, support, so producing open telemetry metrics, or even you mentioned distributed tracing, so maybe Humble producing distributed tracing as well. Is this something that you will provide soon as in the next Yes, release? we actually have released uh, better level support for open telemetry as of 112 this summer. It is um, only for tracing for layer 7, like for the service mesh functionality. Um, we're looking to extend that to, to feature and cover the entire Hubble metrics, including the network observability portion, network policy, network policy drops, traffic volumes. Um, right now it is specifically uh, tailored to the service mesh part and providing um, tracing data with spans um, using the Envoy-based uh, Envoy based service mesh that we have. Um, and also, I, I, uh, if you checked out on the social networks, you made an announcement this week, which was very, very exciting. So can you tell us a bit more about it? So we have two big announcements, I would even say this week. One, uh, the first one we did was uh, Grafana, and Chilean, uh, Grafana and Cilium are now working very closely together. Um, and the Cilium project with Hubble and with Tetragon, which is our eBPF based runtime security observability layer, uh, we, are, we are providing observability data and the Grafana team is helping us out creating dashboards and integrating this into Tempo and Lucky and into um, Grafana Cloud and so on. The Cilium team is essentially a bunch of kernel developers, low level people. Right? We are very good at extracting the observability data at very low cost um, without proxies and so on. And the Grafana team obviously is incredibly good at creating dashboards and making that data um, or modeling that data in a way that is very appealing as well. So I think uh, after Agrafana and other ven uh, observability vendors will probably reach out to you to, s to create similar things. Because I think, yeah, Cilium is great and uh, having dashboard that help you to understand what's really happening in Cilium is really important. And we're definitely completely open. We've previously done uh, a nice integration with Datadog. So Datadog 
for, for example, has a Cilium, um, Cilium dashboard that comes out of the box as well. So it's not the first time we're working with an observability solution. We're, of course, open to everybody. Okay. Uh, do you have any other announcements uh, related to Cilium? Yeah, so I think the second biggest or the second big announcement this week was AKS, uh, Azure Kubernetes Service, uh, switching to Cilium. So Azure CNI is now powered by Cilium and it's available as a public preview. You can try it out today. Um, and that I think is exciting because it brings all the power of eBPF that Cilium has to the Azure, eco, uh, Azure ecosystem. So once, uh, because I, I played around with the uh, GCP uh, provided a, a, a data plane v2 that was, a, I would say, a, a non-traditional Cilium version mm -hmm. that were, there was coming with GCP. Here, when you use EKS, we have like a real a traditional Cilium agents deployed with an operator or they have sort of a light or modified the deployments? It is uh, Cilium open source and then we have collaborated with the Azure team to bring the IPAM code of Azure CNI because obviously the Azure team is um, best suited to actually write the Azure specific um, IP address management code, like how IPs get allocated, how Azure APIs are being used. So we've taken the IPAM code of the existing Azure CNI and Cilium as is from an open source perspective, combined that together. So we now have the full features of Cilium with the Azure IPAM code, which I think combines the best of both roles, which means Azure now joins Amazon, which um, um, is running Cilium in an EKSA context, as well as Google running Cilium in GKE and Antos. So all the three big cloud providers are now using Cilium on their managed Kubernetes platforms. That's very exciting. And also, uh, Civo, uh, Civo is also hiding uh, yes. ID folks yes. in the marketplace uh, Cilium. So at the end, Cilium is everywhere. <laughs> and just a shout out to DigitalOcean, which I think was actually the first cloud provider that bet on Cilium many, many, many years back. And we had excellent, excellent relationships. So also, if you're running DigitalOcean, um, you're probably running Cilium. Unless you change the defaults, you're probably running Cilium there as well. Okay. And uh, so today we are at KubeCon, uh, and that's wonderful to have the chance to meet and do the interview in person. Um, do you have any uh, few, uh, events coming in uh, where people can uh, reach out to you and, and listen to any updates of Cilium? Yeah, so we have we actually have a AMA that we host every two weeks. So if you have questions around Cilium or if you want to um, watch an introduction to Cilium, you can register for the AMA on Cilium.io. It is always community-led. It's one of the Cilium maintainers that will do a short introduction of Cilium presentation. And then you can go in and ask any question that you want. We also have Echo, the eBPF and Cilium office hours that's hosted pretty much every Friday with Liz Rice, Duffy Cooley, Tracy Holmes, where we cover not just Cilium, but the entire eBPF ecosystem. So it's not even the, EB, the, the Cilium specific project, Cilium, Tetragon, Hubble, but, but, but EB, eBPF overall. So the entire, we, we only cover open source solutions, of course, but it's essentially the entire eBPF yeah. ecosystem. So if you want to learn more about Cilium, eBPF, want to dive deeper into this ecosystem, Echo and I think the Cilium AMA are a great way to get started. And by the way, the today's tutorial, I'm using Kepler, so yes. that relies on the, on the eBPF and I think it's very exciting to see that with eBPF you can do amazing stuff such as measuring the power consumptions of a process so that's that's great yeah I would also recommend we hosted eBPF summit a couple of weeks ago and as part of this many of the eBPF based projects made presentations introductions and we had many Cilium users, Hubble users and users of other eBPF projects talk about how they leverage eBPF. So if you're interested in that on eBPF.io you will find a link to the recordings of the summit where you can learn a lot about how Cilium is used, how eBPF is used, how Google is using eBPF and so on. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. In this tutorial we will deploy Cilium and Humble and the Istio integration. We would build few network policies and configure Istio to expose our application. We would expose the various observability provided by Cilium, Humble, and Istio. For this tutorial, we would need a Kubernetes cluster, a Cilium and Humble, the CERT manager, the open telemetry operator. Uh, because today we're going to send the metrics to Dynatrace, we will also need a Dynatrace tenant. We will also deploy not the hipster shop, but the fully instrumented version of the hipster shop 
provided by the Open Telemetry community and referring to the Open Telemetry demo. We will try to create a network policy to, ex to allow the traffic to send spans. We will look at the humble UI. We will modify our Open Telemetry collector pipeline to collect the Prometheus metrics for Istio, Cilium, and Humble. Like every tutorials that we deliver at Is It Observable, there is always a GitHub repository related to the episode. So here we're looking at, obviously, uh, the repo related to our episode related to Cilium and Humble. So there are a couple of requirements that I described before. So I'm not going to go through all the steps to deploy your cluster, uh, deploy Cilium and Humble. Uh, so there are a couple of things that we're going to check at least that everything is uh, properly configured uh, with the help of the Cilium and Humble clients to make sure that everything here. Uh, we will install Cil uh, the Istio integration. We're not, not going to do much about it. It's just that it's going to inject uh, the uh, sidecar proxy in our demo applications uh, but this version like mentioned remove the ip tables usage for the proxy install prometheus of course install the the uh, kubernetes uh, the open telemetry operator and then we have a couple of ingress rules that are in place uh, and of course because we're gonna we're gonna uh, send most of the things in Dynatrace. Make sure uh, you have create a tenant. So if you don't, uh, you can. There's a link to uh, start a free trial. So uh, here, uh, you just put your email address, and you will get in a few minutes a new tenant, and you will be able to do the exercise. So in Dynatrace, a couple of things will be required. We're not going to install any agents. Uh, we are just going to utilize uh, the uh, API tokens because we're going to interact with to ingest metrics. So uh, for this, you need to create uh, a new token uh, and uh, the scope. So I already have done it to be honest, but so I won't do it again. But I will just show you the scope that you need to select. So if you search by for ingest, uh, you will have events, logs, metrics, and open damage traces. And in our particular case, because we are going to be mainly deal with open telemetry traces and metrics, those two scope are enough, uh, but if you want, you can still use logs and events uh, in case you want to use this token for later. So that's the token, that uh, the scope that you need, so that makes sure to select at least uh, those two uh, scope because they will be needed for our tutorial. Then, uh, once you have uh, saved the information, so two things, first of all, copy uh, the URL of your tenant. So here it's a, my, in my case, is a dev tenant, but you will probably have a new URL with a dot live dot .com. So make, copy that URL with HTTPS uh, and put it in this variable. So the uh, DT tenant URL and also same thing for the data ingest token, copy the value that has been generated. Uh, so you will need it to update the various uh, a pipelines collector because we have several of them. Then uh, once you have this, you will have to deploy uh, the core open telemetry uh, collector. So it's a deploy as a daemon set. Um, and then we can deploy the app. So it's the demo application from open telemetry. Um, and it, it will basically produce local uh, open telemetry uh, traces and metrics and uh, push it to locally to a, a local collector that we injected as a sidecar and that sidecar will uh, go a win track with the daemon set. So let's have a look at this um, and we will uh, look at Humble later on. So what do we get? few things. So first, if you start, uh, we can see that we have Hotel, which is our open telemetry collector. Uh, and de deploys a daemon set. We have the hotel demo for our demo app. Uh, then we have technical uh, technical namespaces like open telemetry operator systems, uh, cert manager, those are required for the open telemetry operator. And then we have the Istio system. So that's basically everything. In the default namespace, you will have uh, the Prometheus operator stack. So Grafana, alert manager, node exporter and kubeset metrics. So everything there um, and with the rule that I uh, created with the virtual service uh, in Istio and the getaway you will have a Grafana exposed uh, in the right URL. 
No other thing. Uh, so uh, to get that, uh, by the way, if you want to get that uh, URL, you can say, you can simply say kubectl getaway is a CRD introduced by uh, Istio. So if I do kubectl, here it is. We can see that here we have our URL. So you can still get the URL to reach out to Rafa. Next, what do we get in? First of all, uh, you have probably installed Cilium client. So if you do Cilium status, all right, so you can see that uh, everything is uh, is green. So I have humble enabled the Cilium agent running and the operator running. So everything is deployed. And by the way, also uh, the Prometheus metrics is already enabled on Cilium agents operator and also humble. So if you look at the pods running in the cube systems, you can see that we have a couple of things. So here in my case, is, uh, it's uh, Google. Uh, GKE, so I'm getting some uh, Flint bit and other components related to uh, this uh, this uh, cluster. Uh, but what is interesting here is to see, first of all, we have the Ubel, Humble UI that is uh, running. We have the Humble Relay, so those are the most important components for Humble. And then we can see that we have uh, all the Cilium uh, agents uh, running. We have the node in it to inject the ABPF programs and the operator running here. So we can see that all the components of Cilium are actually there and running. And the pause running on the hotel uh, repo, uh, namespace uh, for the daemon set collector. We can see that we have one collector per node. So this is what you should expect, depending on, of course, the number of nodes that you have in your cluster, but you need to have one per node at least. And then if you look at the hotel demo where we have our app, we can see that uh, most of the uh, applications are running and there are three uh, containers. Why? Because we have the application container, we have the uh, the open telemetry uh, collector sidecar collector. We have also the Istio and VoIP proxy that has been injected by Istio. So that's what we should expect. Um, last thing from there, uh, if you go to Danatrace uh, tenant, uh, you should basically go to uh, distribute traces or services. You will see the various open telemetry services that is uh, running. So here you can see all the various services of our of our application. So you can click and look at the various details, or if you want, you can also click on distributed traces. And from here, we will see that we are getting uh, the open telemetry traces coming in in our tenant. So for example, here I can see click on HTTP get product, and I can see all the various uh, spans produced by uh, by this, uh, this our applications. This is uh, the welcome page from uh, Humble. You can see all the various namespaces available. So let's have a look at the hotel demo namespace, the one for our application. And now we can see the various traffic. So first, in interesting, you can see that uh, the traffic related to EastUD going through uh, the various pods to inject uh, the sidecar. So that's one interesting thing. Then we can remove uh, the filter. And we can see that we have lots of things and going uh, in different areas. But one interesting thing is the hotel D collector. So here you can see that all our most of the pods of our of our, our namespace hotel demo is basically pushing uh, telemetry data to hotel telemetry collector. So it, in fact, if I go back to the hotel uh, namespace to the, for this collector, we will be able to see that uh, we have all those various pods. Uh, reaching out to uh, this pod in the hotel namespace. And it's basically pushing the telemetry data to the internet, and in fact, to my internet trace tenant. So that's, that's from a humble perspective, you can see that there is lots of interesting information. Is because we have uh, deployed a service monitor uh, in, our, in this cluster. So I'm gonna show you briefly uh, the comp settings. Uh, up here it is. So we have I've created various those those are not created, but I have created the extra services 
to grab the uh, Cilium agent metrics, the Cilium operator metrics, uh, because I wanted to create service monitor. I could have created a pod monitor instead, but I wanted to use a service monitor instead. So this is what, how I've been doing it um, to be able to grab the information and send it back to Prometheus. So at the end, if you are in your Prometheus cluster, uh, I would be able to type, for example, humble, and I will see all the humble metrics available. Or I can also uh, click on Cilium and you'll see all the Cilium uh, metrics provided by Cilium operator and Cilium agents. Once the data is, is in Grafana, uh, the great thing is that this Grafana community has uh, already predefined dashboards. So here is the link, the various uh, uh, link to the dashboards available on the grafana.com for the Cilium operator. So V.1.12, which is the version of the Cilium that we're using. Uh, same thing for the humble metrics and also for the agent. So if I want to use it very simply, I use copy the ID. I go back in, da in uh, Grafana and I can import this uh, new dashboard. So I'm going to import this one. Of course, it's going to be Cilium in Prometheus. And you can see that the data will be coming up soon in this uh, dashboard. So that's for one dashboard. For the this one, it's the, uh, the operator metrics. Then I can do the same thing for the humble metrics. And here it is. So you can see here the various uh, HTTP flows with the operation per seconds, uh, the process per node, the flow type. So you can see that's mainly in my case, it's mainly uh, traces, uh, so you could follow traces. That's interesting. Um, and we can also, so basically, you can see the, the type of traffic going uh, in is uh, going through the cluster, and you can see mainly it's traces. You know, in my case, um, and you can see all the various things. So there's plenty of information, which is really interesting, in this dashboard. Uh, so you could basically rely on this one if you're planning to use Grafana, for example. Last is the agent. So let's import that one as well. So then. And now we get also the metrics from the agent. So in the repo, I have the open telemetry manifest, which is the main collector that interacts with uh, with Dynatrace. So first thing is uh, it's the using the, the open telemetry operator. So that's why we have this object. So first thing is like shown before in Grafana, I'm creating some service monitor and some services. So I'm using first the Prometheus um, receiver to uh, scrap uh, the, 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 the metrics provided by the various exporters of Cilium and Humble. So I'm creating this uh, so I can see that I, I'm targeting directly those uh, uh, services that have been deployed in the kubesystem namespace on the various port. Um, and then I'm doing some few processing uh, for the traces and for uh, also adding Kubernetes attributes on this. And then to export the traces, uh, Dynatrace supports the open telemetry HTTP protocol. So I'm using the default open telemetry HTTP uh, exporters. And then for metrics, I'm using the Dynatrace uh, exporter. And here I'm adding a prefix. So that will help me to basically search uh, for the metrics uh, that will be available in Dynatrace. So, Let's jump into Dynatrace and see uh, the metrics coming in uh, from a Cilium perspective. To see the metrics coming in, so first you can click on um, metrics. So if you scroll up, there is metrics here. And here is like a sort of a dick inventory of uh, or dictionary of all the metrics available. So if I type Cilium, all the metrics starting from Cilium will be available. So you can see that I have uh, the Cilium data path, I have the Cilium controller, so the BPF map ups count. So at the end, I have most of the uh, metrics available, which means I can easily create the similar dashboards that we saw in Grafana um, uh, with the help of those metrics that are now available in Dynatrace. Uh, the second thing is, if I scroll da, uh, lay, uh, a bit more, I will see, for example, normally we have some humble metrics somewhere. So it's starting from H, I guess. So let's see if I find them. Here, we can see that we have the humble, a couple of humble uh, requests, so the flow, process, total count, and so on. So, and also we see the drops and so on. Uh, so I'm interesting, for example, to see the flow processed uh, and or yeah, so let's have a look at the flow. So let's see here, I can create a chart out of that. And then I will be able to split by protocol, for example. 
we can see that uh, it's mainly uh, it's mainly HTTP and TCP used, uh, and we can also by type. So we can see that similar to what we had in the previous graph, we can see. Uh, so that's the total. So let me make the average to see things coming in. So we have about. It's a batch processor, so that's why we have lots of traces coming in here. We can see the traffic. So um, it's interesting. And then we can have the subtype to see. Now there is an interesting project uh, that has been built by the same community called Humble Hotel. So I wanted to make a try of it. So again, it's experimental. Um, it's basically adding uh, some uh, some some receivers for humble to collect data and add uh, extra humble traces so uh, as of now it's not part of the open telemetry contrib repo it's just outside but i guess it will soon come in the traditional repo so what i've done here two things so let me open the repo uh, one thing which is important so we have the open term humble this one is uh, as of now uh, I, will, I was not able to successfully successfully deploy it uh, in uh, uh, the cube system namespace using the open term operator uh, because there is some uh, some small in my case in google there are some limitations uh, about this uh, but if you're not if you're not using JKE, try you can try with the open terminal collector approach. But here, what I did, I I build a traditional config map with the open telemetry pipeline, a collector pipeline, and uh, a daemon set for uh, the actual collector. So I'm using uh, a specific image built by the Cilium community. And last, I have a, a service to be able to interact. So what I'm going to do here, so you can see here, we're receiving open telemetry traces and, and metrics. Uh, in uh, open telemetry format. And then uh, I also use the uh, humble uh, receiver uh, that is supposed to interact with humble to add some trace some spans. So uh, I'm not sure it's going to work 100%, uh, but let's try it. At least the idea is that we're going to change a bit the flow of the traces. So now uh, we're going to adjust uh, the also how the metrics are pushing the metrics, the data. So we're going to deploy this one. So it means there will be a new collector sitting in the cube system namespace. And then what we would do is we're going to update our current sidecar um, uh, proxy, uh, sidecar collector, sorry, in the hotel demo uh, applications to now send now their produce measurements to the cube system collector. And what the cube system collector will do at the end is basically forward uh, the uh, produced uh, uh, traces and metrics to uh, the other open telemetry collector where it's currently configured to receive and send it to the entries. So let's do that. So first to do that, we will first deploy, we will first deploy the, uh, the, sil the humble, uh, the new collector that has named humble. Uh, and it's going to be in the cube system namespace. So it will create a config map, the daemon set, uh, and the services. So let's have a look at the pods running in the cube system namespace to make sure it's running. So now you can see that we have new humble collector that is almost running. So, but if you look at the SVC, we can see that we have also new uh, a new service uh, uh, listening on the port for uh, HTTP and, and gRPC of open telemetry. So it's the humble collector. So now it's been deployed. So now what we could do is uh, replace the uh, our sidecar uh, container uh, sidecar collector uh, with that will now will send the data to this new collector. So let's do this. All right, so now it's being configured. Now, uh, to be able to uh, take advantage of this, uh, what we're going to do, uh, I can do a rollout of the entire uh, demo app, but in my case, uh, it's not a critical application, it's a demo app. Uh, it would be easier for me is just because I'm going to delete and redeploy. Uh, so that will force basically the all the pods of the hotel demo app to uh, restart and using the fresh new version of the collector. So now to be because we changed the traffic, let's have a look at Humble. Okay, let's have a look at the hotel demo namespace. 
And what do we have? We can see that now the traffic is sent to this one. All the app is sending the data to Open Telemetry Collector, uh, sitting in the Cube System namespace. So this is working. So now, if I look at the hotel namespace, I should have a different type of traffic now. You can see that now it's the collector sitting in the Open Telemetry uh, Cube System namespace, sending the traffic to our hotel. Uh, collector sitting in the namespace hotel and this is sending to Danatrace. All right, now that we have this, let's have a look at the traces because now we've sent, we have uh, slightly adjust the way we are sending traces. So yeah, so this is, for example, if we are just going to get product, so it's interacting with a product. We don't see any major difference, so I don't, I don't, I don't it seems that the uh, receiver, Humble, is not uh, adding more data as of now, so we could investigate a bit more. So if you were successful, by the way, let me know. So it would be interesting to see if you have more details uh, before and after the usage of the Humble receiver in open telemetry. All right, last part of the tutorial is to create a, a Cilium network policy. So what I want to do is to authorize um, the traffic for our specific uh, collector sitting in the hotel namespace. I want to authorize either the traffic from hotel demo, which in fact, in our case, it's not super required. Uh, and you could send it to uh, also from uh, the cube system namespace. So now it's the actual status from, from, from our end and that are able to interact only on the ports uh, related to open telemetry, so uh, uh, gRPC and HTTP. So let's apply this, this uh, new uh, rule, and then we will upgrade that rule by uh, putting an, an egress uh, a, a rule to, uh, that will basically uh, uh, force uh, uh, Cilium to drop the package because we will not basically authorize the traffic to Dynatrace but to another domain name for example and we'll see that uh, in Humble we'll see all the traffic dropped and no traces will be sent back to Dynatrace. So let's ap apply this rule uh, and now it's being created. So let's open Humble. So you can see here uh, in Humble UI you can have any verdict or you can see forward dropped so if I look at dropped, I will basically filter on everything that is currently dropped uh, from uh, this specific namespace uh, because after applying this rule, we should not expect to have any drops. So we can basically uh, go back to any verdict. And you can see here as a list, uh, everything is forwarded. And we can see that from the world, we have a couple of IP address sent. So that's the uh, Dynatrace uh, tenant that I'm using today. Now, let's modify the rule. So let's go back to this one and create something that will uh, force a humble to uh, to drop uh, our traffic. I want to add a pure example. It's going to be after ingress. There will be egress rule, and to uh, I will see. I want to send it to Dyna. I say something that doesn't exist. Dyna. Dyna. Okay. Dyna.com. Um, so actually, uh, this should be failing so should have drops and also i can also precise to that rule uh, where i want to send uh, that data so the port we can say for example that up uh, two ports and so let's move this here uh, we can say 443 okay so now let's apply this rule and see the impact of the rule in humble directly so now it's been configured so now let's have a look at what's going on here. So let's just make a small refresh. You can see here now we see it dropped. So all the, the data, data that is supposed to go outside, now you can see here it's been dropped. So here policy denied. We can see that the, the rule that we have applied is working. That's it for today's episode related to Cilium. So Cilium is a big platform covering a lot of features. So features for networking policies, to filter, to drop, to authorize specific 
endpoints of our services. And also, I think what is also exciting is the fact that it resolves a lot of issues that we can face when we have too much services due to the limitation of IP tables. So as you understand, Cilium will replace uh, the usage of IP tables using eVPF, and you can even remove through proxy and delegate uh, all the proxy work to Cilium. The uh, support of Service Mesh from a Cilium perspective uh, using Envoy config is exciting because we, can, we don't have to use at the end uh, sidecar proxies, uh, but they still provide also this uh, Istio integration to have also support for Istio. Humble on that direction, I think, is a really great solution to provide extra observability using eVPF. So at the end, you have a fully understanding on all the traffic going on, uh, the drops, uh, the networking rules, and way more. So if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So see you soon for another episode. Bye.